Hello, welcome back folks, it's uh, Delvis Garage. Uh, this is going to be episode 11 of Project Rat Trailer. I, uh, I just want to start on the body today. I've been off for a week working so I haven't had a chance to do anything uh, with this but it's today I've got three or four hours before I start work so I'm going to get a little bit done um, just to keep up with it really. Otherwise you roll backwards and it's still sitting there in a month's time. So today I've got to prepare the wood that's going to be the body. Now uh, it's going to be the, sh the, the, the shell if you like of the trailer uh, and there's got to be a brace placed on the chassis because the span of the chassis is too wide the wood's going to bow when you put any load in it so we've got a little bit of welding got to weld an extra stress the extra chassis bar it's easy for you to say uh, across from the chassis and i've then got to start prepping the wood with a paint wash um go into that in a little minute what paint wash is so there you go stick around stay tuned this is going to be episode 11 and uh see what okay this this little packet of wood here. Um, tell you a little bit about this. This was um, this is almost history. This wood uh, I bought from the old Texas Home Care, which is a company, nothing to do with the place. Um, back in the 80s, we had a, a house which the bathroom needed refurbishing, and the, the, the plaster on all the walls was so bad that I had to pine lag this bathroom. Um, like a pine cladding rather, a pine clad it completely because I'm not a plasterer and we couldn't afford plastering so I bought all this tongue and groove wood and we did a nice pine cladding and I had four packets left over and that was about 1991 and this stuff, these four packets have followed us house after house for the last 20 years so this, I've had this 20 years, this wood I don't know if it's any good it, Still, it's dry, it's still it's been wrapped in plastic. Well, the other three have been wrapped in plastic. This is a remainder of a packet. I've got enough here to do the trailer chassis, bar perhaps one. So I'm gonna use it sparingly. Along the sides, I've got obviously an end span problem. So the off cuts are gonna fill that and then we'll frog them like a brick wall. So effectively they'll fit in. And they are tongue and groove, so one will fit into the other. But the, the, the issue today is, is across here. Um, obviously across the front of the chassis, we've got the center spar which is going to act as a brace um, but there's nothing at the back end so back here we're going to have quite a lot of flex even when the tongue and grooves go in and it becomes one board that is effectively still going to be a problem so I need just a little metal brace across there to be the same as this and I want to try and make it too exciting because the issue of weight again um, it would be very easy to I was thinking probably use one of these which we harvested from your old table the other day. Um, cut the top and bottom off and make that, make it out of that. But that is powerful heavy, it really is. It's quite thick stuff. Um, so I think that's a problem. What I've decided instead, again, harvested from that table that we got from the dump, was this kind of centre rod. This thing was kind of up the middle and it held the legs at the bottom onto the table at the top. So I'll put a couple of nuts at the top and what I think is we'll drill into here, we'll put that in through um, and double nut that either side to hold it and then just probably, probably weld it at the back. And that being a piece of 10mm bar, that will be strong enough once that's welded in place at that short sort of 18 inch span to give the strength I need with the wood. So the first job of all jobs is going to be to drill a hole in here grind the primer off underneath, bolt this in, tack weld the base on, so let's get stuck in. Stick around, stay tuned, see what happens. Okay, grind off some of the primer in preparo. Right, on further inspection and all that, where I plan to drill through here, as we can see, there's these blocks on the inside, which uh, when that had that leaf spring across there, they were guides that held the leaf spring in place, and they are solid bits of three quarter inch bar. So drilling through that is just not gonna happen with a hand drill. So change of plan, best laid plans and all that. I'm just gonna weld it against there and there so effectively the span will just go across and it will just get welded tack welded each side it's not going to hold a lot of weight and the wood's obviously doing some holding 
So that will just probably be best if I just put that butt weld there and then weld the nut round and then weld that across there. Seems easier. Put a little flat in it so it comes up to height. Should be fine. Bit more. as it rolls on for a week. Just got it set up now. Uh, just want to try and do this with one hand. Just want to show you what I mean. Uh, difficult to do, but it's. Hang on a minute. It works out going from there to there, 61 centimeters. Uh, same there to there, 61. So that means that. Those two measurements are the same, which means that must be straight. Uh, well, it must be correctly across that width and measuring that to there, 61, and that to there. So that's absolutely square with them. You know me, OCD. And the other one is, like I said, when you put the wood across here, obviously I don't want this dipping down lower, so the wood's still bumping up and down and it's not touching underneath. I want this up high enough to support the wood. So this has got to be at the same height as this or at least as this, which the wood's gonna rest on. So, simplest way, I ground a flat in that nut. Let's put the ruler on. And there it is, flush all the way along. So that's nice and held in. Clamped in that end. I just weld that one first. Let's get the buzzer out. Okay, plenty of weld in there, messy, but strong, and more than anything, straight. Just looking along that completely, it's completely straight, so the OCD is served, that's a bit messy, but it's not going to get seen. Okay, I'm going to daub some paint on this, and then we can move on to the wood. And as this is mild still, I'll coat on that as well. Oddly enough, this is still hot. When the paint goes on, it kind of burns in, so you know that's going to stick. Right, now here's a little grandpa trick for you, another one that my famous 
fantastic grandfather taught me years and years ago. Um, when you look at wood preserve, I've got to preserve the wood on the trailer. I don't want it rotting. Um, it's been through all that on the last lot. So this is pine. Pine is going to rot like a pear. It really is. And the trailer's drying off now. So all I've got to do today before I go to work, I've got another hour and I can get cracking into this preservation of the wood. The wood itself is pine, as I said, and it's going to rot really badly. So I've got to do something to protect it. I've looked into the prospect of, you know, your brain always thinks get some cuprinol or some really good wood preserver or perhaps just some creosote or even the old trick of painting it with some oil, but it's just not going to then absorb the matte black paint or the, the bed liner that I want to put underneath. So the simple trick my grandfather taught me is he used to have a fishing boat. Him and his friend used to have a clinker built fishing boat and they built it th together between them. And to preserve the wood, they did a paint wash and you use a water based paint and you wash it right down with water, literally. So like the stuff you wash the brushes out in, you just wash it over with a, uh, and the water carries the particles in. If you put the paint on neat, that paint effectively just stays on the surface. But if you put the paint on with loads of water, it soaks in, it carries the paint in. You do two or three coats and you've actually impregnated that wood. And I can show you how because I'm going to do the wood now. I'm going to paint it all over with a paint wash. You're going to use the matte black, blackboard paint. Blackboard paint is sealed. It's a, it's a non-porous paint and it's very, very tough. I've painted it all over damage and that thing's bulletproof almost. That scrim and stuff that's on there with a the blackboard paint, you can hit that with screwdrivers. It just doesn't touch it. It's fantastic. It's almost like a bed liner in its own right. In fact, I would imagine you could line a bed with that stuff and it wouldn't scuff. Anyway, let's get this done. I'll show you it works. Stick around. Okay, what I do, I start with just putting about sort of 10 to 1 mix really of the paint and water just to start with. It's just a wash. It's not a proper paint or anything. You're not putting any coating on it. All you're doing is soaking the wood to start with just with the paint and effectively making that water slightly impervious or slightly impregnated with the paint. Give it a stir. Now it's water based paint. It just mixes up nicely. Give that a good stir around, make sure there's no solid bits in. And if you go and buy dedicated wood preservers, you'll notice that they are that consistency. They're very, very watery. And that's because the, the spirit or whatever the particles float in is deliberately there to carry those particles into the wood grain. If it's too thick, like I said, just sits on the surface. That's perfect. Okay, let's get stuck in. And here we go. It's just a case of really boring. Just brushing on the watery mix. Let it soak in. Don't have to put a lot on. It goes a long way. And it's just the same as creosote or anything else. It just impregnates the wood with some of the paint. And then when you put the paint on top, the proper thick paint on top later on, is already soaked inside. And when we finish this, I'll show you how much it sinks in when it's all dry. Right in the tons as well. And it is quite boring really. So I'm not going to show you all these. Just do one side at a time. Let them dry off. Do the other side. Till they're all done. So there we go. That was boring. 33 boards and by estimation and measuring I need 31. So I want much room for messing it up. But they're all now nicely soaked and impregnated with a wash of blackboard paint, which will preserve them. It does work extremely well. And they are soaking right through. As you can see, it just soaks right the way through. It's fantastic. Obviously paint on both sides, otherwise they curl up. So there we are. That is it. Stick you on there. So there you go. That's it for episode 11. Um, can't do much more. Got to let these dry for about two days, I think get all the water out of the wood before I seal it and then I can start cutting it up and then 
cutting the boards to size, go and get some fasteners. Now, I'm going to do a list. Today I'm going to get to work. In a break, I'm going to do a list of exactly, I think I'm at about 65, 68 pounds so far. This wood was free, I've had it 20 years. The wood preserver I've made out of black wood paint and water, so that's free. Uh, it's working well. I want to get this whole trailer rolling for less than 100 pounds, and I think I'm on, I'm on target for that. So there we go, that's it for episode 11. Can't think of anything else to do right now, so let this dry. So I've got to get changed, get all this paint off, and get ready to go to work. So take it easy, thanks for watching, ride safe, I'll see you next time.